My name is Cliff Mass, and I'm a professor of atmospheric sciences at the University of Washington. During the past decade, my colleagues and I have noticed a dramatic decrease in the math capabilities of incoming freshmen at the University of Washington. This video will examine the nature of this drop in math skill, speculate on its origins, and provide a concrete plan for ensuring that all Washington State students receive a world-class math education. But first, a little bit about myself. For 25 years, I have served as a faculty member at the UW, with my research dealing with weather forecasting and the numerical simulation of the atmosphere. I have served as the department's undergraduate advisor, and I have taught a predominantly undergraduate class, taken mainly by freshmen, Atmospheric Sciences 101. Starting about 10 years ago, I began noticing a disturbing trend. Students were having a harder and harder time doing the math that students in the 1980s had little difficulty with. This was particularly true of simple algebra and the use of fractions. I asked my colleagues in other technical fields whether they noticed the same thing, and universally they did. As a result of these changes, I've had to dumb down Atmospheric Sciences 101, particularly in the area of the kind of math that I used. But there was objective evidence of this downward trend. The University of Washington gave the same pre-calculus assessment test to students between 1990 and 1999. As you see in this graph, there was a precipitous fall in the scores from approximately 1993 to 1998. It got so bad that in 1999, the university decided it needed a new exam, an easier exam, and you can see the scores on that graph. Were the University of Washington students getting less intelligent? I think not. This plot shows the GPA of incoming freshmen, which steadily rose during that period of dropping math scores. This year I taught Atmospheric Sciences 101 and I gave the students a math assessment exam. This math is only the math you'd expect from a good middle school student. The scores were abysmal. Let's take a look at some of the details. Only 45 percent of the students knew that 2 to the minus 2 is 1 quarter. Only 64 percent knew the definition of a cosine. And most disturbing of all, only 14% could solve a simple algebraic equation. But there is additional objective evidence of a decline in the math ability of Washington State students. Roughly 30% of our students required remedial math during their first year in college. The revenues of math tutoring companies in Washington State went up by an amazing 340% between 1994 and 2004. Over 40% of Washington State high school students have failed the math wassail portion. This is a very basic exam, and they failed it after two tries. Technical professions that require math skills are increasingly being filled by foreigners, and I've certainly seen this at the University of Washington in the more mathematical and scientific departments. So what is going on? Could changes in the Washington State math curricula be part of the story? In 1989, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, NCTM, promulgated a set of standards. These standards promote the discovery approach, where students are encouraged to discover mathematical principles on their own, rather than being instructed by their teacher. There is far less emphasis under the NCTM approach to using proven algorithms such as long division and there is far more emphasis on using calculators. There's less emphasis on acquiring mastery through practice, far less emphasis on algebra and geometry and geometric proofs. The underpinning on learning programming and logical thought are no longer there. NCTM math is also known as reform or constructivist math, and some of us call it fuzzy math. 
During the 1990s, a series of books consistent with the NCTM standards were adopted throughout the country. Also during this period, states such as Washington State modified their curricula to reflect the NCTM approach. There are a number of NCTM-based books. Examples include Turk Investigations, Pearson's Connected Math Program, known as CMP, McDougal Little's Integrated Math, and the Interactive Math Program, known as IMP. These books are widely used in Washington State and in many others. And these books all share the underlying deficiencies of the NCTM standards. In these books, many critical topics of algebra and geometry are missing. Students do not gain mastery in the use of fractions, manipulating equations, trigonometry, and basic arithmetic operations. But this is not academic to me. These books have greatly undermined my own children's math education. Let me tell you about my older son's experience with McDougal Little's integrated math, which he took in late middle school and high school. These books skip around topics in a frenzied and frenetic way that makes mastery impossible. They lack coherence and the logical progression of ideas. I was so concerned about my son's lack of basic math skills that I signed him up for Kumon math, extra tutoring in the high school, and work with him at night. And fortunately, we were able to salvage his math background and education. In high school, my younger son used the interactive math program, IMP. There were nearly no equations in these books. Students had to discover them for themselves. They were built around themes, like jumping off of a Ferris wheel. These books also were missing key mathematical elements. My son frequently complained to me that IMP was not challenging, and he wanted some real math. He wanted to learn more. Looking at the figures, the graphics in these books says a lot, with students putting their hands up about functions, calculators saying they'll do it for you, and students spending much of their time with manipulative trying to learn math by moving little blocks and rulers. But there is objective evidence that shows that the NCTM program lacks effectiveness. The National Research Council, the leading provider of objective scientific information in the United States, established a committee to evaluate the National Science Foundation-sponsored NCTM curricula. Their report on evaluating curricula effectiveness judging the quality of K-12 mathematics evaluations was damning. The committee's finding was that there was no evidence of effectiveness of the NCTM curricula. Examining 147 studies used to evaluate 19 NCTM programs showed that there was not enough evidence of any kind to show that these programs were effective. But there are other objective studies that have shown the poor results of reform NCTM math. A recent study published by William Hook and co-authors in the peer-reviewed Educational Studies in Mathematics demonstrated that in California, the switch from, from reform math to one reflecting the curricula of leading math nations resulted in a stunning increase in student performance and particularly the less advantaged students. The Fordham Foundation gave Washington State an F on its math curriculum. Our state standards were found to be poorly written, needlessly voluminous, difficult to understand, and at times having little to do with mathematics. So the bottom line of all this is that Washington State is currently doing an abysmal job in providing math education for its children. The decline in math performance in Washington State was coincident with the introduction of reform math. Could this be a coincidence? I think not. So how do we fix this disaster? What needs to be done? Number one, our state needs to adopt internationally competitive math standards. These are the math standards used by the nations whose students do best 
on international math exams such as TIMS, which stands for the Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, an exam given to students all over the world. California took this step, abandoning reform NCTM math in 1998 after a disastrous trial of reform math that began in the early 1990s. And when they made this change, positive results were clearly apparent. Number two, our state needs to form an independent oversight committee of mathematicians, parents, and math educators to create a new set of Washington State math standards. They will also create a menu of curricula to guide districts in textbook adoptions and oversee state standards and textbook alignment. This committee must be truly independent of the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction, OSPI. Since the superintendent's office is a primary supporter and a lobbyist for reform curricula and wishes to stay the course. Number three, we must reestablish the use of a nationally normed assessment such as the Iowa test of basic skills. The WASL is an extraordinarily expensive and fatally flawed exam that should be dropped. We need an exam that will allow us to compare our performance with those of other states, something that is impossible with the WASL. The governor and the state legislature are actively considering revamping the state's math curricula, so it is critical that we now make our voices heard. One way you can do this is by calling the Washington State Legislative Hotline at the number that you see on your screen. Another thing you can do is get more information at an excellent site is wheresthemath.com, a site produced by a local group of parents, mathematicians, and educators who are trying to promote excellent math in Washington State. Current math education in our state has greatly harmed a generation of Washington State students and has undermined our state's future. It is time to fix this. Thank you.